Welcome to another video by Lame Creations Log Analysis Made Easy. This is a video playlist where we're covering all of the different .com files that we feel are highly important. Remember that this is a playlist, so if you're just jumped in the middle of it, look down below in the uh, and you'll see in the uh, comments section. Uh, the description you'll see it, the playlist you can actually get all of the uh, .com the premise of this is not to make you guys all subject matter experts on every config file and today we're going to cover the inputs.com I want to cover enough that if you go into a job interview that's what this is for is that you remember what are the most important fields that you want to be discussing uh, there are so many nuances to each of these config files you can't cover everything so just remember this is a high level these are the most important you want to know these otherwise your people might question your your knowledge on Splunk so anyway this will help be a good refresher of what's important on the indexes.conf.spec one of the things I don't want to go through this whole page and normally I go through examples but this is a massive list if you look over here you can see that you can monitor that's probably the most common stands I've seen and this monitor here it's going to be looking for files you can do batch you can do TCP, SSL, UDP, scripted input, hack, Windows inputs. You can see all the different types of Windows inputs. I mean, there is just so many different types of inputs. I can't cover them all. Just know that the inputs.com file is the config file that you will, you will configure for any form of data that you want to ingest ultimately to Splunk. And so that's what the inputs.conf is, and it can take any sort of, it can do all sorts of files. Some of the most important stanzas you'll want to know is, hands down, the host field. There are two places that the host field is set. Host field is set in the server.conf file and the inputs.conf file. And they're both set when Splunk is installed. So when you install Splunk, it'll look at the system name and put the host field in both of those by default. If by some reason you change the name of your server, you're going to need to change it in server.conf and inputs.conf. But anyway, the concept is whatever is listed here, when the data flows in, this is going to give it, it'll be that name. So you, if you don't put a host in there in, in any of your input stanzas, it will just use the default host. Otherwise, you can you could have machine X ingesting data and set the host to be machine Y. Why you would do that, there might be use cases, but the point is this will over you can use this to overwrite the default setting for the host. And next one that I, index, I really like declaring my index. I want the index to be set as a general rule. I don't want Splunk to just try to guess. By default, if you do not have an index set in your inputs, it will go to the main or default, whatever your default index is on Splunk, that's where it's going to go. And one of the things you can do with this stanza is if you have a lot of indexes I went into this is the uh, an example this is the Etsy system default do not mess with this but you can see there's a default stanza and you could put your index notice why is the index going to my default because I put it there but if you have lots of different inputs you want to send them all the same index you can make a bracket default on your uh, inputs.conf and put index equals and call it once and then you don't have to put it in every individual stanza source Usually you do not need to declare this. It's going to, by default, take the file path to the file or wherever the data is coming from. So sometimes you'll want to use it depending on these sources over here. But when you're monitoring, I like to leave the source alone because it'll tell me the exact file I read. Source type, definitely, definitely you need to declare this. This is going to tell Splunk, hey, what am I going to do with this data? How do I parse it? All that sort of stuff. So you'll put a source type in there. We'll show an example down below. And the last piece that I typically will use is, they call it deny listing, but it's this blacklist stanza. You can protect files from being written to. So you could say, hey, I want to monitor this entire file path, but exclude these files. And that's what the blacklist option does. So we're going to jump down over here. We're going to go see some examples. 
So a very, uh, we're going to use a monitoring stanza, most commonly seen inputs that I've got. There, you you might see TCP, UDP, or heck, depending on what your environment is. But typically, I'm monitoring logs directly from a file, and so that's what I'm going to do. If I, there's a like, it's a file server or there's logs there, I'm going to put a monitor stanza and I'm going to ingest them. You'll put monitor colon slash slash in Linux, you're going to end up having three slashes because you start stuff with lo, uh, slash var or sl wherever the path is. In Windows, it'll be two. But just remember, you need uh, if, if you're on a Linux environment, you can almost guarantee you'll have three slashes in a row. Windows environment, it's monitor colon slash slash. And then your path, C colon whatever or Linux slash var slash log, whatever. Okay. Other things you can do, notice here they're declaring their source type. They've even used this ignore older than. So, hey, I'm going to go look at the log. Any log that's older than seven days, I'm not going to ingest. So, that's a way, hey, I don't want to ingest everything. Um, here is an example of putting in a TCP monitoring. You're going to go colon uh, slash slash colon the port. You might say, here's my connection host, give it a name, the source type, and in this case, you'll put a source because you don't have a file to monitor. That's what the exceptions to the rules of sources. And so often you'll see here, maybe you want to put um, syslog machine X. You can put whatever source you want in there, and it will tag that stuff with that. You can, um, here's an example of a TCP with an IP address, source, source type. Um, Splunk TCP, let's see, anything else I feel like really needs to be covered. Windows event logs. Anyway, that's the basic concept with an inputs.conf. You're going to want to, you might be monitoring, you want to make sure you put an index in there, a host. Uh, just remember all the different types. You can basically, any logs you want to have come in, they're going to be, there'll be a setting for it. And you want to do heck. This is how heck is done. You want to do, and you can just come in here. I, I do recommend, this is one of those, if you ever need to do it, this document is, is so helpful if you don't have something already set up to take the stuff out. Anyway, but basically you need to have a host, you're going to want a host field. If you don't have it declared, you're going to want to, you definitely need an index, source type. Those are absolutely required. You can deny list using blacklist, et cetera. Okay, so I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst with Splunk Ninja. I hope it helps you in any interviews you got coming up. And if you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm really pushing for people to become members, which is join the channel. It's more than just subscribing. It <laughs> when you join the channel, you get access to stuff that is not available to others. You get early releases of the videos. I have specialized multi-hour long trainings on system administration for Splunk and search and reporting and how to do threat hunting and things like that that is not released to the public. I, I do these memberships because I, I it helps fund this channel so that I can continue to bring in the technology that I need to be able to show these videos. If you like this stuff, Join my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, I hope to see you around. Take care.